Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of Software Testing Bootcamp where we are learning about the concepts of software testing in very detailed. We are in chapter one talking about the basics of software testing and continuing ahead with the same segment that is 1.4 test process. In our previous tutorials, we have covered about test planning, monitoring and control. This tutorial will be talking about the test analysis. As a part of the test analysis, we will be trying to understand what exactly happens post the test planning and the monitoring steps are defined. This is where the journey begins for the testers or the testing team to start working on the testing activities. The test analysis, as the name suggests, we are talking about working on analyzing and reviewing the test basis. Now, test basis is one very common professional term which is used for any documentation which can be referred as a basis for deriving test cases or in order to test an application, what is the document that you need is put together collectively called as the test basis. In fact, the name test basis stands for basis of testing. Like what is that you are referring in order to create your test cases and test the particular application. So we start analyzing or in other terms, reviewing the test basis, which you have as a part of your program, as a part of your project, you start gathering them, you start going through them and come up with your findings. That findings could be a kind of defect, which you find and related to more of like ambiguities, omissions, inconsistencies, contradictions, inaccuracies, or missing information or kind of misunderstanding as well. Now we are talking about reviewing the work products. We are talking about reviewing the requirements design because a test basis can be anything as we can derive test cases from any of the work product. So let's talk about, say for example, you're trying to review the requirements and trying to understand first. The very first thing is to understand that what exactly is the expectation until unless you understand what are the requirements, you may not be able to create test cases or ultimately will not be able to test the system altogether. Now, while you are going through this, you raise your concerns and that's what you call it as the findings of your review process to be shared with the developer or the architect or the BAs or the kind of, you know, business analyst who has prepared the document. So it depends on the document which you are referring to. If it is a requirement, you should go to the BA. If you, you're talking about the architecture, you should go to the designer. Or similarly, if you're talking about reviewing any of the development work product like code or workflow, algorithms, etc., you will be going to the developers. Or even the simple testing too goes to the developer. But this time, we are not talking about running any test. We're talking about reviewing the work products which we will be referring in order to make sure that it has all that information, what you really need in there in the document before you can start using it. While you're understanding the requirements, it's equally understandable that you will be defining what are the items which you will be testing in this. Because there could be a possibility of having a lot of items which are in scope, but there are few which may not be in the scope as well. For example, I'm talking about one of the performance requirements where the performance requirement says that I need this application to work fine for 50 users as of now when you're building this application. But down the line, the requirement will be to have it for 500 users. But at, right, at this point of time, we need it only for 50, 50 users uh, on this application. Now, the point is that the customer is trying to let you know that, hey, when you build up the architecture to create this, you, you have to make sure that you consider that tomorrow I may have the requirement of 500 users too. So you do not build the architecture again and again because it's most expensive job in the test process or overall development lifecycle. Just like building up a house, right? When you're building a house and maybe you have planned to build a three floors of your house, but today you don't have the budget to build the three floors. So you are planning to build only the ground floor, right? So you still create the architecture which can handle the three floors load or the number of pillars which you'll be installing or putting up your foundation accordingly to sustain the load of the building, right? No matter currently you're creating the ground floor. So same way here, you are talking about the items in scope and out of scope. So you are building the architecture today. So client will tell you that I may have requirements of 500 users down the line after two years. But right now, 
the in-scope item is tested for only 50 users and it should work fine. Now that's where you start listing down the features or the requirements which you will be testing and what will not be tested as a part of your this project. Also to add, we start listing out the test conditions. The test condition are basically in simple terms called as test scenarios. When you have certain specific requirements, we try to derive a test scenario which you will be testing. A scenario is something which a user is expected to do on the system and will be further broken down into the form of test cases. So test scenarios are easy to identify. For example, what can you do using a cell phone? I can make a call, I can kind of take a picture, I can send a text, right? Talking about a particular product like ATM, the automated teller machine. Here you can withdraw money, you can you know, kind of you know, change your pen, you can get mini statement, you can do the balance transfer, a lot many other things. So these are all my different scenarios which I can do with the product. Similarly, if I'm talking about any other application like onlinebooking.com, make my trip, you can book a flight, you can cancel a flight, you can modify a flight, you can just check the status of the flight, you can do a web check-in. There are so many scenarios under that, right? A user can do any of these. So you start listing down based on the requirement that what are the various scenarios which a user is expected to perform on your application. And based on that, you will be creating and listing down the conditions. At this point, you can also say you can prioritize the test conditions that which one is more critical to be performed or which one is more significant enough to be performed first. For example, in order to perform cancellation of a flight or modifying a flight, a booking should be done, right? And booking should be the priority test condition. That until unless I can book a flight, I cannot talk about modifying or cancellation of a flight or doing a web check-in, or checking a flight status. So none of these becomes priority item for me, but of course, the booking of flight becomes the most important priority item. So this is how I can prioritize my test condition right here while I'm going through the requirements. Now this doesn't have to be in two different phases, team. We, we start right from analyzing the requirement, and as we go through the requirement, we understand them, we parallelly start listing down the various scenarios which comes to our mind or which is going to be logical enough to be tested. At the same time, we just do not limit ourselves to the specific functional requirements. There are different types of requirements which you get from the business when you test the product. You can have functional requirements, you can have non-functional requirements, you can have structural requirements, the business and technical factors to be taken into account. There are a lot of such things including the risk factors. We'll be talking about each one of them step by step, but just wanted to let you know at this point of time that, hey, this is what happens during the test analysis phase, and people expect that what need to be available in order to get started. And this is where you meet your entry criteria to get started with your life cycle and start with the first activity of reviewing all your reference material before you can start using them. So. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.